All right, maybe you guys will want to watch the base coding process of this, so uh, I'll go ahead and start recording right now. So um, the, what we're going to be using for the base for our rust is the Rough Iron by Army Painter War Paints. It is sort of like the old Games Workshop, I think it was, what, Tinny Tin or something like that? And I used to use it for like my flamers and stuff back when I played 40k. But uh, it's a really good color, and that plus some uh, liberal layering of Nuln Oil and then shining it back up with um, a Pig Iron by P3 is going to give us a pretty good corroded look. And then we will then cut in parts that I want a little shinier with the pig iron, such as the blade and the mail, and that will then get highlighted with a silver. And we are going to do a straight color of this tinny tin on his visor and on the cross guard and the pommel of his sword. To It looks sort of gold when you put it on there. It's kind of a corroded bronze look. So uh, we'll use that color and we might tint it up a little bit more later. So we're just going to go ahead and Take a minute here to look real quick. We see our light. We're shiniest on this side. There's a little bit of shine up towards the top. Dark shadows there. A little bit of shadow there. This is pretty bright all the way through. Bright at the top. Bright there. Dark in there. Bright on the top of that shoulder pad right there. And uh, same. The helmet's going to be sort of the same deal we had with the Lannisters earlier. All right. So now that we've talked that over and we've got a mental idea of what we're working on, we're just going to go ahead and grab some of our paint. And this is not diluted at all. We're just going to go ahead and start slathering it on there. The only thing you have to be super neat with right now is don't go over your yellow. You just went through a lot of trouble. Even the highlighting, you know, how we primed it, was all so we could do that with the yellow. I guess you can use that a bit for the skins if you have a model with a lot of skin. I mean, I'll probably do that with uh, Theon when I paint him up, but uh, most of these models don't have enough skin to really do glazes out over the skin and get it to look right. So, at the end of the day, it's your bright colors that you get with this, and that's about it. Because uh, metallics are notoriously bad at glazing. You lose all of its... Uh, mica in there that makes it look shiny. Like I said, you don't have to be super meticulous with this, but it does save you some cleanup time. coming off camera here. Problem, I move my tripod every time I paint and I don't know where I'm sitting. Okay, so hopefully you guys didn't miss anything too crazy. We're just painting that. Now we're going to go ahead and hit the tops of the quillian. Yeah, you might have Missed some of the painting, but you got to enjoy my sweet voice, and I know that's what you're here for, right? Yeah, I know it. Don't have to be shy. You can admit it. All right. Cover that grief. All right, so the boots on these guys. I don't know if these are supposed to be a closed toe armor or if the boot's supposed to be... Uh, showing through on that last toe. We're just going to say the whole thing's armored. Fully armored Sabaton. Seems weird with how little armor they're wearing that they would have fully armored Sabatons. Being that you guys, you know, you can find people historically that have full plate man, so they'll just have chain or just boots. But no, we're going to Leave our arms bare, but cover our feet, because Lord knows those Starks are coming after the feet. Maybe they're worried about the dire wolves. You know, I heard that they're little pups and they're ankle biters, so better cover your feet, boys. Dire wolves are coming for you. Little did they know. 
Especially once like Nymira gets a little bigger and starts tearing into them. So while I'm painting this in George Martin news, my wife pointed out to me yesterday, I think it was The Guardian had an interview with George Martin. I kind of ignored it because I just saw a headline for it saying that he had never really saw Game of Thrones going as far as it did and he thought maybe it was just going to be a short story. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. But I guess in the interview he says that he doesn't know if he's actually going to be able to finish it because it's so much harder to write than he thought it was going to be. And Winds of Winter is him pretty much writing multiple short novels because of all the points of view and trying to keep them straight. And while he thinks he's going to finish that one before he goes into Dreams of Spring, he would like to do the next Targaryen book and he would perhaps like to do another Dunkin' Egg story. Which, I mean, I do love Dunkin' Egg, I do, but I would rather finish up the Song of Ice and Fire series and know how it ends because if you are a big fan of the HBO property, good on you. I'm glad you enjoy it. I don't hate it. I've watched every season. There are parts of it I do enjoy, but uh, sorry, the books are a lot better and that's how I want to see this thing finished. Stannis is alive. I don't think he's going to die like a punk the way he did in the show. And the show is just way too quick to make everything super rapey. Like Daenerys getting raped on her wedding night. That really kind of destroys the tenderness of Cal Drogo. And it makes you wonder how Daenerys could fall in love with this monster who would rape her on, the, on her wedding night. Because you know, he didn't. He waited till he had permission. Keep it off of the fingers there because I'm going to make them wearing leather gloves with just demi gauntlets. Again, you know, he's got so much padding and he's got this leather thing on the back, not armor. At least I think that's what that's supposed to be. Straps go around and yeah, I don't, I'm not going to paint him with a breastplate or with a back plate, it's just going to be the breast. He's got a cloth arm, he's got a mailed arm. And we are almost done with the base coating. I have to hit the helmet. Let me cut it in here real quick and get the rest of that pauldron. And I'll just slather on this helmet making sure we don't get any on his face while we're at it. I enjoy painting for you guys, but let me tell you what, painting around a tripod and a camera, I don't know why anybody would just do this a lot. So why am I doing this channel if I don't like painting like this? This pretty much started because I was on Board Game Geek and somebody had started a thread there saying they were new to painting and had no idea how to paint these models. And uh, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube already for painting very nice looking models, but I wanted to show people that you could do it a quick and easy way and still have decent results at the end of the day. So I hope that's what everybody's getting out of this. Oh, and by the way, if you like the channel, subscribe, leave comments, blah, 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 all that stuff. All right, so I've said it. All right, so there we go. I'm going to leave the uh, visor alone for right now because I don't want to accidentally just start painting that with the armor because I'm not thinking because I'm talking to you guys. Oh, got a little bit more on the grieve there. Like I said painting a camera is a pain. Okay, so let me rewash my brush. And we, yeah, sorry about the light there. My arm's blocking my lamp. All right, so there we go. And I am going to go ahead and start doing some Nuln oil. So again, Nuln oil, you've seen it on other videos. 
we are going to do probably three coats on here. After that, we are going to probably do one coat of the Agrix Earthshade. And if you want to, you can do um, the Camo Shade. If you want to add some kind of like green corrosion in there. Oh, this is going to be so dark, I don't think it's going to read well. And I also bought purple specifically for armor, but we're going to go into those tones when we do um, either Brienne of Tarth or when I do Sander Clay. They're going to be in brighter armor. So we'll go over it on one of those with some of the other tones. You can also use that orange that we used on here already to hit around some of the rivets after you've shined this up again, and that will get, make everything look a little rusty. All right, so we're going to go ahead and place this on the first coat. We're just going to liberally apply the oil everywhere that we painted armor. Make sure my pot's open all the way so I can really get my brush in there. This you can be a little sloppier with than you were with putting the metals down because if a little of the known oil gets somewhere else, that's fine. It's just going to give a little extra shading for you. All right, we already got that, but it doesn't hurt to give it another coat. Okay, going to go over here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and slather some of this over the mail to help pop those rings. The rings are already standing out decently, but with the airbrush, some white did get in there. It's just how it works. So uh, we can correct that just a little bit. And get in there. The arm especially got lost in definition because of the airbrushing. And we'll just have to pop those details with some wash. All right, I think that's everything. Okay, oh, let's go ahead and hit this guy up real quick. A little bit more mail. Okay, so the mail has been picked out and we have a single coat of Nuln oil on there. So it is time for me to pause this video and hit the stuff under the hair dryer since we're not working in, on a whole squad and we will come right back once everything's dry. All right, coming back after we've had some time to give that Nuln oil some time to dry and we're just gonna start putting on the second coat. While we do that, I'm gonna talk about how we would paint the sword on this since I'm not gonna film that. You guys already saw how I did steel with the Lannisters. You can go back and find those videos if you want to see how that works. And you can do sort of the same thing with this. Um, for this model, how I was doing all of his compatriots is I paint the blade initially with uh, pig iron, just like I did with the Lannisters. And instead of shading it with the blue, I do a coat of the, um, oh gosh, what is it, the Agrix Earthshade on the uh, metal to tone it down. And then I put a little bit of orange right here towards the cross guard, blend that in. And after you've got that, you've got a fairly dark and dingy iron. And then I just polish that back up with a dry brush or a blending, a wet blend of the uh, pig iron again instead of going into the Vallejo model air silver. So that will get you sort of a similar blend to what we had in the Lannisters, but it's going to be darker. I've also painted up a few of my Stark troops and I've done something very similar with them, but without brown. And with them, it was a coat of black. And then I did a coat of purple and a coat of green like this with the uh, camo shade. I guess they have several green colors, so I should go ahead and point out it's the camo shade, so it's a very brown green. And that I will still take the highlights up to silver. So 
So it's a little brighter than what we're going to do on these guys, but it's still darker since they're up in the north and don't have time to be pretty like the Lannisters do. Uh, maybe Sir Roderick does, since he's anointed by the Seven. there under that arm quite a bit okay so that is a second coat so now on the third coat we are going to keep in mind where the shadows were so the third coat I'm going to place it right here on the side of the breastplate I'm going to put it here on the bottom I'm going to put it on the underneath of the pauldron right there on the elbow back sides of the greaves here so we're and in the crevices of the helmet because I really want those shadows to pop a little bit more. And also, after putting that first coat of Milne oil on his visor, I think we're going to do that a pretty bright silver. And they all look cool. I've got gold on the rest of them. All right, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and dry this and we will come back for the third coat. All right, time for that third coat. And we're going to be a lot more careful with this one, as I was saying. So um, we don't need to get as much on the brush because we're not slopping it this time. It's even beneficial to uh, put some onto your towel and get rid of some of it. Because we don't want too wet of a brush because this is going to be more of a glaze and less of a wash. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and hit that. Gonna hit the underside right here. Drop some in there. Put some right there on the foot. Go ahead and hit that side. Get, knock that back down in shadow. Towards the bottom of the hand. we hit up that crevice and then across the pauldron inside of that elbow will be in deeper shadow we're going to go ahead and actually for that I'm going to use the rest of my holder here Whoop. without breaking anything I hope brush. Okay. And towards the bottom, there we are. And on this one, pretty much feel like I can kind of slop it on this side. And then I'll just come back with my brush with water and just brush off the very top. And let's pull that back off the top there. All right. So as you can see, we went from kind of a gold color. It's still kind of ruddy gold, but we're getting closer to something that actually looks like a dark iron. All right. So after that, that was a easy placed uh, coat. I should dry fairly quickly and I'm going to go ahead and get my Agrix Earth Shade ready. Because this one we're going to be a little more liberal with. Pop this back off. Um, since I'm pulling out this brown you might be thinking well hey when you were doing this uh, speed paint on that yellow why didn't you just use the brown instead of orange? Because you said you were looking for brown. It's a good question. I tried it, and I was hoping that that would give me a richer brown than what I get with the orange. But the brown uh, shades like this didn't really get any coverage over the black. It still read too close to black, and at the end of the day, that doesn't really help when you're trying to get your shadows into a brown spot with your yellow ink. 
ahead and hit this with the brown. This color would also make a really good copper with just a couple coats. If you did a after this a turquoise wash, it would look like a very old penny, and you'd have this nice coppery color. Okay, what is that? Who, who wears the copper armor in George Martin? I think it was like Royce or something. They had the ancestral bronze armor that they always wore. You know, again, if you're under this show, I don't think you know what I'm talking about, but if you read the books, you can probably tell me down below which character I'm talking about. I know somebody has bronze armor. Okay. So, we've added a coat of brown, and now it's going to be time to polish this up. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and give this a quick dry, and get my pig iron ready so we can go over and clean this up. All right, and now everything is dry. You saw my hand pop into frame magically after I splice this together. Let's go. Um, so we're going to go ahead and highlight this stuff up. So when we remember our highlighting, we know that this edge right here, um, the breastplate should be brighter. So we're going to go ahead and do our two brush blending method. our color in like that and oh sure now everything's gonna dry up real fast on me oh well. no issues I'll just go ahead and put a little bit more in I think what this is is my plastics are warm for me artificially drying everything so learn from my mistakes that happen right when I'm on this channel because I'm not going to re-record this. If you're going in and you are using a hair dryer to set your paints, you might want to give it a minute before you try doing a wet blend. I'm having no luck with the wet blends on this right now. It was funny because I did the other models and it was fine. Make sure we're still on frame. Yeah, no luck. Water to this. Yeah, it's the only thing I contribute it to is warm plastic. Now, this one's certainly not going to win any awards. Draw that down a little bit more, and while we're at it, we're just going to go ahead and drag some of this paint across the blade. Yeah, I know. You guys have thought you are going to watch me blend, and now you're just watching me base coat. What did I pay for? You know what? You're watching this on YouTube. You didn't pay for anything, so deal with it. Top of that, I want to hit this. Push some 
that color that way, so over here. And that will really pop out once we go ahead and hit the rivets. Uh, I'm not going to film putting the rivets on here. Just take your silver paint, uh, Vallejo model silver, whatever you're using, and go through and pick out your rivets. that right there. Get a nice bit of shine. And there we go. It's cooling down. That's blending better. Okay. And now we gotta hit. I gotta see this in the light because my light's horrible today, like I already said earlier. It's very cloudy today. And unfortunately where I'm sitting I only brought one desk lamp with me. Yeah, my fault, I know. I'm not bringing the right lighting. No one to blame but myself. Go ahead and brighten that up. I know, we forgot to get in there. Same techniques, you can just paint inside there. And grab some of my... Iron paint that's still on my wet palette. And brush in there so it's darker. Now we're going to go back to pig iron. Let's see where is that on my palette? Here we are. And let's see if I can get this to where you can see it. Now looking at the camera, trying to find a good angle where you can see what I'm doing. I don't think it exists. So you're going to hit the top of this helmet here, just like we did on the Lannisters. And get that lip. Put a little bit right here. Aldrin. And come in and blend that out a little bit. I'm going to take the edge and hit right there, edge, and bring the edge down just a bit. How much of this? banners in the way. I can't tell. If you can't see this, I apologize. I'm think thinking that banner might be getting in the way of what I'm doing uh, from the camera. If that's so, I am sorry. Alright, and let's see. Here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on these toes, even though it's on the back side. There's not enough highlights over here, so go ahead and bring those out just a little bit. And I want the top right there to get a little bit of shine. Pauldron, not the pauldron, but the uh, greave kind of wraps up onto the top of the foot. And put our line in, get the shine. And then once we have that shine line, we're going to go ahead and drag a little bit of it over to wrap around into the foot. Okay. All right, and did I hit the top of this? No, I didn't. Get the top of that. Real quick, blend that out. And here on the bracer. All right. Actually, I see that. I'm going to go ahead and hit this again. I'm 
mark up a little bit more polish for it. Okay. And I think that's going to read as a pretty nice dingy iron. Alright, so I'll go ahead and try to get a good view of that. So you've got some shine there on the breastplate. It's dark where it's supposed to be dark. We've got some brown tones from the base coat of the rough iron and from putting a sh coat of the Agrix earth shade on there. And got a nice dirty looking iron. All right, so real quick, I'm going to, before I stop this tutorial and we call it good on the steels, I'm going to grab that Fugan orange that we used on the yellows. I'm going to get rid of a lot of it. I don't want this to be washy. I want this to be glazy. And you can just come in with that, find where your rivets are, and just put it down by the rivets. And you get just a little bit of orange tinting right there. Put some on right there. Right there. Maybe there's a little bit of rust on his gauntlet there. That's anywhere you want to put some rust. Go ahead and give the impression of it with just a little bit of orange. Pick up that rivet. see some of these tones I really want to go in there with a blue and drop in some teal this color really looks like it turned into copper really fast and drop a little bit of orange there okay oh, right there Get a little bit more orange okay so that's a subtle effect it doesn't add much you don't have to but let me see if I can get that close enough go in there and just add a little bit of orange you can blend that back out if you want. I'm not too worried about it. But if you wanted to, you can come in while this is still wet and just blend that back out. Or slowly brush it to the rivet. Beyond what I'm hoping to do, though. So, there you go. The basics on here. And next time you see him, I think we're going to go over some methods on how to paint this. More like how we did the Lannister banner with all of our different colors. Okay, I hope that was enjoyable, and we'll see you next time. Uh, remember again, like, subscribe, comment, yeah, that stuff. Okay, thanks a lot, guys.